Welcome to Diligent Canine, and in this Q&A video, I'm going to talk about dog parks and why they're a bad idea. I want to point out first that, in theory, dog parks are a great idea. There should be places where we can take our dogs and the dogs can interact with each other, people can interact with each other, and we can interact with each other with our dogs. So. Where this often breaks down is in practice and what actually happens in reality at these locations. I also want to point out that I'm far from the only trainer that feels this way about dog parks, so I'll make sure to include several uh, resources and references to other videos and articles for you to check out. The biggest problem with dog parks is control of other dogs, or rather, the lack thereof. So no matter how well behaved, how obedient, how well socialized your dog is, there is never any control over someone else's dog. I cannot control someone else's dog. If that dog has poor boundaries, poor manners, and comes aggressively or not sprinting towards my dog, that's inappropriate. That's something that I've said before on video that uh, I don't tolerate from other dogs and my dog doesn't tolerate from other dogs. So what we have then is a perfect setup for uh, a fight with dogs. And regardless of who is right, who is wrong, who started it and who didn't, it's a mess and it's a problem for both parties involved. Speaking of control or lack thereof of other dogs, many people just let their dogs run free and do whatever they want in a dog park. This is a huge, huge problem because they have no way to correct or to redirect or maintain any control of their dog when a boundary is getting pushed. So somebody lets their dog off the leash and they start running around, but then maybe they start getting playing too aggressively with another dog but the handler is all the way over here and there's no control over the situation. So um, with that, different people have different expectations for their dogs and for how their dogs interact with dogs and people. So first we have the problem of not controlling your dog. Then we have the problem of not being able to control your dog. And then we have a difference in uh, opinion and social skills of if I can control my dog, maybe we just have different uh, rules for our dogs, for how they interact, and sometimes those clash and they don't work well together. Moving forward from that, we also have the problem of learned disobedience. So this really feeds off the last couple points that when a handler doesn't maintain or never had control of their animal to begin with, uh, the, the dog plays appropriately or not with another dog and they learn that they don't have to listen to their handler because the handler has no control over the situation. There's no remediation. So this is particularly a problem if you haven't trained and improved the behaviors of your dog for them to uh, come back to you and to learn that there are consequences and bad things will happen if you do not listen to me. So there is nothing that you will do in the heat of the moment that will be more fun than chasing and playing with another dog. And that's assuming there's no inappropriate, uh, no, no inappropriate behavior. So no fighting, no humping, none of that. If the dog is just playing with another dog, you're going to have a really tough time uh, getting that dog back if you haven't proofed those behaviors. There's no tug or piece of food that you can wave around that will suddenly and magically and instantly be better than playing with that dog. It simply won't happen. The next problem we have then is how handlers or dog owners oftentimes respond to that. They get frustrated and, and they themselves get angry at their dogs for not listening. So when their dog finally does come back to them, what do they do? Well, oftentimes they whoop them. That's not going to help because what you've just done is taught your dog that coming back to you when you call gets them hit or gets a correction of some sort, some kind of punishment. And that's not what you want to do. In your mind, you're frustrated and upset, maybe even scared for your dog's safety. And you, you, what you thought you were trying to discourage was that behavior of not coming back to you. But there was a delay and dog's minds don't work that way. They don't process complex thought like that. So when they finally came running up happily back to you 
and you immediately put the leash on them and drag them out of the park, and that's maybe a best case scenario with no, no punitive punishment involved, they just learned that when I come back to mom or dad, I have to leave this fun place. You think the dog is gonna be very willing to do that again? Absolutely not. There are some maybe minor points to consider as well as far as why dog parks are a bad idea. Um, You've probably heard of resource guarding before where a dog becomes protective of its toys or maybe even rounds up and gathers up other dogs toys that are in the park and kind of hoards them. And that's not okay. Um, And there are multiple layers to this problem. One, that dog should not be taking things that aren't it. Um, In my opinion, the dog should be engaging with its owner. Um, And whoever left their toys around just laying out for other dogs to take isn't being really responsible either. That's kind of asking for a problem or allowing a situation to happen where a problem can arise. So resource guarding can also happen over things like water bowls. Um, Obviously it's a good idea to bring your own, but if there's a limited number of equipment or resources, dogs can become protective of that. Um, They can even become protective of the territory of the park itself. If one dog frequents the park and then a new dog arrives, um, the former dog can can become territorial and defensive of their territory. Something else to consider is sanitation. Dog parks are gross. They don't ever get cleaned except maybe when it rains at best. So what you have is a whole series of dogs and depending on the population density of the city or town you live in, it could be dozens or hundreds of dogs peeing, pooping, vomiting. In a best case scenario, dogs wipe, or sorry, humans clean up after their dogs, but everybody knows that certainly doesn't happen 100% of the time. So by going to the dog park, you're letting your dog step in urine, feces, and vomit from a dog that you have no idea what kind of diseases they're carrying, what their current health or history of health is, if they're up to date on their shots, what kind of worms they might have, if they're up on their flea and tick medications. There simply are too many variables that you can't account or control for at dog parks and then makes them a really bad idea for your dog to be exposed to that kind of thing. I will say that I have used dog parks in the past and specifically I use them not to socialize my dog, not for my dog to interact with other dogs, but to teach my dog to in- ignore other dogs, to ignore distractions, to, to not engage in that sort of uh, what I deem as bad behavior. And the way I do this is by approaching the dog park and I begin training my dog, whether it's an obedience or whatever activity I'm doing for that day, um, many, many dozens of yards away from the fenced in area of the dog park. And gradually I will work closer and closer, closer to that. So obviously, you know, you could be a, a fairly significant distance away and your dog can hear, see, and definitely smell other dogs in the park doing their thing, but you have that barrier of a fence to stop that. So um, I think there's a Michael Ellis video out there where he talks about this as as well, and he shows himself um, healing with one of his mouths around and outside, uh, right up against the fence of a dog park. So that is probably the best use of a dog park. I would have to agree um, with Michael Ellis there. Um, Not that I would disagree with them, but um, overall, dog parks are a bad idea. They're just a slew of problems that can arise that you have no control over, and that's really the biggest issue that I have with dog parks. Not that problems can't be overcome, but the specific problems associated with dog parks are out of my control and out of my dog's control. They were like, Uh, They place too much confidence in other people and how they've trained or how they interact with their dogs or how they've taught their dogs to interact with mine. And I've just found too many situations where those don't line up and I don't want to put my dog in a bad situation where he can fail like that. So thank you for watching. And if you liked the video, subscribe on patreon.com slash diligent canine to support military and working dogs.